Hi, my name is Rich. I use the he, him pronouns. You're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role-playing games with friends. This is the second in a two-shot of a game that we're playfully calling Cyberpink. It's a CBR plus P and K. It is a forged in the dark game about cyberpunks, but then it's titled in a cool elite speak. The game was originally released, at least I found it on itch, and it was released in a very interesting format. Uh, there was a player pamphlet, which is like a three page pamphlet version, and a GM, a GM pamphlet. So you could print it out in color and fold it up the right way and have a cool pamphlet that you could share with people face to face. Uh, but we're not playing face to face because I just don't want to fly Sabine from Germany all the way here. And that's like a lot of flying people, various areas. So we're just doing it over the interwebs. Uh, this is the second of two, which means that we'll be bringing this particular run to a close, which is exciting and also scary. This is part of Star Wars Saturdays, which I'm running on Sundays. So uh, this is set in a Star Wars world. It's set after the original trilogy has come to a conclusion. The setting is a place called Karania City, which is on the planet of Sereno. Uh, Sereno is this planet that in expanded universe, don't worry, I'm not going to go too deep into the nerd nerdiness. But Sereno is the capital world of this imperial remnant. So yes, Palpatine went down a shaft in Death Star 2, and that blew up, and we'll never, ever see Emperor Palpatine again. Uh, but it didn't mean that the Empire immediately just folded. The New Republic is rising and trying to free the galaxy from the clutches of the Empire. But there are certain despots who said, yeah, that sucks that Palpy's done, but I'm not giving up control of my piece of the Empire. One of them is the name named Zinj, called himself Warlord Zinj, and he declared Sereno, the planet he's originally from, to be the capital of the new empire, uh, the warlord of the empire, Zinj's empire as it's known. Karania City is a very cyberpunky world. In fact, because of Zinj's far reaching or, or his eye towards a, a bunch of other planets, while he does technically call Sereno his home. He is most often on a superstar destroyer and he has allowed the mega corpse on Karania City to pretty much run things. Uh, occasionally, if someone is able to pull his ear, he might send some stormtroopers down to do one or two particular things, but generally uh, the corporations have free run of Karania City. It's a profitable city because capitalism has run amok. And one of the ways that you can try to get a leg up in this setting is to be a runner, which all of our characters are. Oh. The game Cyberpunk or Cyberpunk was originally created with the idea that this is your last run. It's a very scaled back version of Forge in the Dark, brilliantly trimmed away uh, a lot of the parts of Blaze in the Dark that are made for campaign play to kind of supercharge it for supercharge it for solo play. In fact, there's no downtime mechanics per se. There's actually a particular move to refresh your stress, but you can do that in run because the game is designed for this is your last run, which is fun and interesting. And I really like all the changes that have been made to make this a quick and easier game for folks to pick up. Pretty cool. Uh, so let's go around the horn very quickly to reintroduce ourselves to our runners after, as Rich always, always wants to jump to learning about the characters before he talks about safety, but he remembers and he always makes himself look dumb by remembering in the middle of the thing. So I, we pull back and say there are safety tools that we're using. We're using lines and veils as well as ask first. Those safety tools are all communication ahead of time. These are things I'm not interested in. Uh, these are things that I'd like to communicate about before we drop it into play. <clears throat> so they're all marked on our character keeper. We're all aware of those, but that's something you should definitely be using in your games. And then on top of that, just in case we run into something that's completely unexpected, but is bothersome to your play, kind of harshes your fun. We have the X card 
if you need to pull the X card or play the X card, please just say, hey, I need an X card. I need to X card this thing. If it's not clear to me, I may ask you what it was that was X carded. But I'm not going to ask you to defend yourself, to explain yourself. None of that. I trust you. We're all here to have a good time. If you X card a thing, then it shouldn't be here. And we'll excise it from our play and then move on. Uh, and then open door. Any player can leave the game for any length of time. You're adults. You're grown-ups. You got stuff to take care of. You spill water on your computer. Go do that. Go take care of it. If you can give me a heads up how long you'll be gone, awesome. If not, go do the thing. I'll keep playing. And then we'll uh, pull you back in when you're able to come back. So with all of that out of the way, we now will reintroduce ourselves to our, our runners uh, we're going to start on the side-by-side -side version of the character keeper, which means that Sabine, you are first. If you could introduce yourself and tell us about your character. Yeah, hi, my name is Sabine. I use any pronouns and I'm playing today Ava Veer, who used to be a stormtrooper, but then lost both of her arms to a lightsaber thing. It's not clear what happened there probably violence, and uh, now has two cyber arms and is very strong, very so strong cyber arms. And she can also shoot out her arms like, like telescopes a little, uh, like Reed Richards on the um, Fantastic Four. A little, not, she's not elastic herself, but she can shoot out her arms. She is the muscle and she's pretty unapologetic about that. She's the muscle, she's bodyguarding or, explaining to people why they should act a certain way and if they if they do more then maybe she'll get a little violent herself that's the life thank you so much sabine ava veer next up is steven if you could introduce yourself and tell us about your character please my name is steven my pronouns are he him today i'm playing clocks whose pronouns are also he him clocks um was modified by the imperials um to have a computer interface. So he's really good at interfacing with uh, systems. And, you know, he has some background in getting around some rebel systems and imperial systems he usually just had the key to, but he has some experience with them. And he's very, very punctual. He's he's the he's the one on the team who makes sure that they have everything kind of planned out and says, this is where we're going to be at this time. And he gets a little bit fussy, whatever, you know, as happens every time something gets, you know, something get, goes not according to plan. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much, Stephen. And last but not least is Sherry. Hi, um, I'm Sherry. I use she, her pronouns. I am running Sci Sci Five Six. She also uses she, her pronouns. Um, she is hmm, a a, she has the soft skills, the, the ones that it takes to uh, kind of suss the situation people-wise and essentially hopefully smooth things out with people as we move through the situations. Um, she's good at streetwise and observation and influence essentially. Otherwise she's a little weak um, as, as has been uh, I should say amply demonstrated on some of the more mm, hard aspects of the the run however she absolutely trusts these two she's worked with them before and um they have in fact been able to cover for her throughout all of these things for which she's quite grateful Awesome. And for those listening or watching who can't see the character keeper, and of course, Zoom, for some reason, has chosen that if you put your, your pop-up name, it won't show on the recorded YouTube video. The cleverness of SciSci Far 6 is that it's S-Y, P-S-Y, Far, the number six. Very cool. I love that name. Just want to point it out. All of all the names of these characters. The mission or job that you are working is that this was given to you by Janice, your fixer. You are to infiltrate this super luxury hotel owned by the Osiris Corporation, known as the Octoria Hotel. Currently staying at the Octoria Hotel is a Ping corporate executive 
known as Chinda Phi. Chinda Phi has a large stock portfolio and you are to infiltrate her room, uh, get past her security team and convince her however you wish to transfer the holdings uh, that she has in Ping to a separate account, uh, a shadow account. Now, you are, have been told by your fixer, Janice, that he'll be writing that account, like watching transactions to make sure that that takes place. And once that does, then the funds that you have negotiated for payment will be transferred to your accounts and the job will be considered complete. And whatever happens after that point is up to you vis-a-vis -vis your uh, target. Can I get a clarification on that? Yes, you may. So is she being asked to just give them away or to sell them at perhaps not the best price? Uh, she, so the, the job is have her transfer these, thing, the ownership of these stock, this stock portfolio to the shadow account. Hmm, okay. They have not provided you any funds to pay for those, those stocks. So basically rob her in front of her face. And because yeah. of the particular biometrics, that's what's required of why you, they, they didn't just have some, uh, some slicer or hacker come in and transfer the funds that there are particular security. Uh, she has to actually be present to initiate that transfer. All right. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that is what the job was. You have done enough research to understand that the AI, that, that the, the hotel seems to be run by an AI known as Chess, the Corporate Hospitality and Entertainment Service, that this AI has a number of drone type droids, protocol droids that it can remotely control, that also it has a particular protocol where it is concerned with its guests and their safety and comfort, but that the guests who bring attaches, uh, corporate security teams, those are not considered guests. You have very cleverly used that loophole to insert yourself into the hotel, heading up to the floor where you encountered the number members of Ms. Phi's corporate security team, including a giant herglick uh, by the name of Bayside. Bayside has been stunned and she is resting peacefully. Other members of the team have been uh, dealt with. There are a couple of team members who are currently in the hotel room that the, has functioned as their barracks. They're locked in. And then there were a couple in the kitchen area who, correct me if I'm wrong, but you kind of locked off the kitchen area so that you can move to her uh, workout area that the Herglick was protecting. And, uh, and that's where we had stopped the last session with you guys standing on the threshold to the door to Chinda Phi's workout room where she, you know, she is inside, correct? Cool. So instead of picking up with that very moment per our post-game discussion, what we are going to do instead is do just a wee bit of day in the life, see what it is that makes these runners tick to see why it is that they are desperate to get these creds. What are they after? What do they need? So who has an idea to kick off their particular scene? I have an idea. I don't right. know if that's precisely what this game looks for, but I have an idea to what you could see Ava Beer do in the time when she's not on the run. Um, 
And you can see that there is a small restaurant in the, well, it's not precisely in slums, but it's not in a great neighborhood of, of luxury and stuff like that. It's just a that restaurant where normal, ordinary people would go. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Ava is in the kitchen. Ava is uh, doing the cooking stuff. And, and if you can imagine having arms that it can extend, it's actually in a kitchen. It's actually quite amazing to have that, right? So she's uh, doing that. And uh, she seems to be more at peace, I say, and centered than she than, than you've seen her so far. And then um, the, the kitchen door, there's some, some knock and there she goes over there and there is a kid and looks like a bit grimy, that kid. And, uh, and the kid looks at her and says, hey, do you have some Serrano mix? And she's like, of course, I do have some Serrano mix. I mean, come on, you know who I am. And then she pulls out some of these Serrano mix, which are little bottles <laughs> that look a bit like colorful popcorn and gives them to to the kid and uh, then the door opens and some kind of functionary restaurant runner or owner or something comes in and says what's going on here and she says oh whoa, that kid stole the sereno mix the kid runs off and says oh and she kind of tries to tries to grab the kid with her arm and says oh wow she well he was too fast and the owner says that happens to you a lot and she's like, yeah, well, I don't know. I can't help it. And the uh, owner is grumbling, but uh, she's, yeah, try to find someone to, who does, uh, who, who works a kitchen with cyber arms like that. So he's grumbling at her. She's kind of keeping to herself and uh, kind of grinning to herself as he goes off. Ah, so then... Ava has this like regular job working at a yeah a kind of fast food place or a, yeah. or a restaurant yeah. in the back of a restaurant. Yeah. It's a restaurant. It's not a fast food place. It's a right. it's okay. a it's a regular restaurant, but uh, it, it yeah you you need some balance, right? You need a regular job, and then occasionally you get, just have to cut loose because I don't know. I like it. You have I to like push it. the edge, right? Nice use of the Sereno mix. It's the same mix. They just name it for whatever area they're in, right? Awesome. I like that. When, oh yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's, let's check in with someone else. Do we have any other ideas front and center folks want to jump out with? I suppose I could. <gasps> Yay. Yeah. Um, so I think that you see um, Sai Sai and she's sitting in um, sort of like the camera comes down this long hall and it's clearly going through like in a sort of run down maybe a government building or, or someplace that has like a lot of offices and things like that. And um, the camera kind of comes to a room and it has a sign and I mean it's an old sign but it says mediation on it um, and then you see essentially someone turning the, th the you know essentially going through the door um, and that's when you see Sai Sai and she's sitting there and um, she'll stand up and sort of nod and say please sit down um, you never see the person mm -hmm. um, but you see behind there her screen it sort of shows up and it goes, your mediation. And it goes, um, you know, essentially, uh, and it reads down a court case. And essentially you watch her talk through this person's side of a divorce. Oof. If that's making any sense. Absolutely, okay. And so, and so she's like, all right, so your partner, um, it, it she kind of goes through who has this stuff and then you sort of um, you can hear sort of like it just sort of their reaction to it and then there's a certain point at which they break down in tears um, and she sort of talks them through and goes now this is how this is handled these are your options going forward and um, and then she goes and please know 
violence isn't necessary. It won't help at this point, and certainly not with me, um, because I am merely here to talk you through these situations. And and you watch her kind of talk this person down. It, 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 when she does all this talk, it, is it em empathetic? Is she mechanical about the way she approaches this? She's mechanical with like the court case things, and then empathetic when that person like gets to the thing but she's also very firm does that make any sense yes yes oh yeah, yeah that's that's super interesting you know and she and and there's very much that so so why don't you tell me how you're feeling you have some recourse but let's work through what your options are in this moment so very much that kind of thing very you've done this a hundred times this is just one in a, a string of Wow. And then there's a kind of thing of she gets them out the door. She turns back on the screen. It tells her how much she's been credited. And she sits down to wait because she says she just does this as a gig thing, um, clearly. And when she goes to sit down, you can hear like some device of hers start going off. And she's like, oh. and she goes to answer it. And it's, you know, essentially she picks it up. And now she's having a conversation with someone who's clearly like a family member. And, and so she stands up and she stops the thing like she's not going to do the next one. And she walks out and she goes, okay, what, what do you mean? You know, and, and essentially what it is, is you just have this thing of her going, okay, I'm coming home. I'll be home in a moment. Uh, you know, in just a few moments, just hold on, just hold on. And you'll see her get out and she actually like grabs a taxi of a sort. And, she, and the first thing you see is she says the destination and the amount that it costs to get there, it pops up and it's the exact same amount of what she was just paid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's like, and, and you see her like rushing home. And so it's that kind of thing. If you get that sense of her life is do some gig stuff and then uh, home. Does that make any sense? Yes. And, and it sounds like the kind of work she does is a little bit of hand to mouth if she has bad luck. Mm -hmm. yeah, we yes. totally know why she's doing these gigs then. Mm -hmm. and if I remember correctly, oh, what was it? Now I'm going to go look and cheat a little bit. So I said I wanted to get out, you and your sister, right? Yes, yes. We, um, there are always these offers like to, to get a plot of land and you know become a, a farmer and it's very you know become i don't know you know how organic farming looks so lovely and everyone walks around with a, a basket and harvests pretty perfect vegetables and has a fun time at the farmer's market that's the picture that they kind of have going then that far future ver version of that and so i think you have that sai sai is like she knows it's not going to be like that but it's still got to be better than what she's at. And it's, and I think you get the implication that the problem that she's rushing home to is her sister. So it oh, is, it's good to ask. Is yes. she the one that kind of, oh yeah. So if Sai Sai were on her own, do we get the feeling that Sai Sai is competent enough that, and, and has the skills to where she didn't have this drain on her resources that is the emergencies of her sister, she'd be a lot better off? Yeah, you get a lot of the sense that she does gig work because she can't do anything that she can't interrupt. And is her sister just one of those people that makes poor life choices who maybe is a, she's a, adolescent? Ah, okay. If that so makes any sense. Sai Sai's kind of the, the surrogate mother or effective yeah. mother. So she was a child and now she's an adolescent. The adolescent phase is a little bit more dramatic. Um, if that makes any sense. So essentially what her sister needs is, is more dramatic than when she was a kid, which was just being there for her at all the pivotal you know, transition times. Right? So now nice. everything's the best or the worst. And usually the worst because of that age. Neat. Does she, so let's name the sister, right? Let's, let's definitely have a name for her. Does, is Sci-Sci-Far-6 your handle? 
Uh, yeah, actually, it is. It is uh, her work designation, like essentially her credentials. Oh, the cool. FAR six is like it's her license. You know, like the last four digits of her or characters on her certification. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. So let's give at least like a first name for this sister here. Okay, um, that's a good question. Let's see here. How about? Um, uh, Soon ah, cool. Soon ah, yeah. And is soon ah, like she's is she obviously biological sister? Like they have very similar look. Um, yeah, I think actually, I think kind of like frighteningly so, like the exact same face shape. Um. Uh, hair that has a like sort of lays really straight um, though her sister's is short um, and and like their chin and mouths are very much the same eyes are different though um, like set a little bit differently you can tell like maybe um, maybe just from one of the sides of the family a little bit stronger sense but like really um, and the, I think the thing that's weird is when they talk, uh, their voices sound a lot alike, except that Sai Sai is very calm and her sister's is very emotional. Oh, that's neat. So there's probably a, a strong identification of Sai Sai understanding, yeah, well, this is terrible, but we've all been through it. Mm -hmm. Kind of compassion. That's interesting. Well, I think there's also a thing of, uh, how do you say she knows what her sister's going through. Um, and a lot of her reacting, like getting there as quickly as possible is actually her trying to push away her, her own exasperation with the situation. Does that make any sense? Like she's super accommodating because she knows she's super annoyed by it and that's not fair to her sister. Oh yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And I, like there's, I'd love to like frame these questions into a scene, but I definitely need to know. Do we get the sense that Sai Sai knows that not that Sai Sai no not Sai Sai? Uh, let me see. Do we get the sense that Soon Ah is aware that Sai Sai is frustrated, or is Soon Ah still in that teenage, very self obsessed? Uh, and so most of the time she's more concerned about her problem than all that she's put upon her older sister. Yeah, I think she's in that completely unaware of the rest of the world thing in a lot of ways. I mean, flips out of it for a few moments, but is always back in there. It, it, she's at peak injustice moments. So you know, oh, what is this? That's, that's, I remember those days. That's cool. Uh, cool. That That is good. And do they live in, what's the place that the two of them live in? Is it like a small one bedroom place that they share? I think that it's it's um, a kind of actually large place, but with a lot of people in it. And you get the sense that it is a bunch of extended family. Hmm. Um, and they are like a two person unit that are like of, direct family and then everyone else is like cousins or second cousins and you know that kind of thing and so it's that I'm not saying that it's a charity situation they're paying their fair thing but the fact that they're they're staying here they've chipped in with a family endeavor is essentially it um and it's yeah so it is a set of connected apartments and some of them are just, you know, bunk rooms. So I get it. That that is very, very clear and interesting. Awesome. Thank you so much for letting me probe in, learn a bit about Sai Sai and Suna. Uh, what about clocks? Yeah. So I think that you know the last thing we kind of saw on screen was uh, Sai Sai Far Six kind of step into a taxi and kind of head off. And I think the camera pans and watches that go by in the distance. And then it, we get the star wide 
and it looks almost like an identical office to where uh, Sci Sci Far Six was, um, except we're on the opposite side of the desk, and <laughs> we see clocks um, sitting there talking to a human female, and she says, you know, they're talking back and forth, and he's nodding a little bit, and she says, "Clocks, I think it's important." I actually, no, she says, uh, "Odron, I think it's important that you recognize." Um, what you are and where you are. I'm afraid that you're... Uh, um, I think it's unhealthy, your obsession with this, you know, with your past life. Um, and this is obviously some kind of counseling session that's going on. And he said, you know, he nods a little bit and says, I understand. And, you know, she says, uh, I think it's important that you live in the moment and continue making a life for yourself where you are. And he nods and he's, you know, she gives him a little bit of homework. He stands up and he goes out the door. And as he steps out the door, um, there's, it's not really a, a line of people, but it's more like a, uh, there's some people out in a large foyer kind of area outside this office. And you see people who are missing arms and legs and they have cybernetic, uh, some of them have cybernetic replacements. Um, and we, you know, see a medical droid who's sitting there going, Oomba, Oomba, you know, mm -hmm. and kind of checking on them and, you know, trying to test out different pieces and making sure, you know, touching the leg and the, it jerks a little bit. Um, and we see some of these replacements are actually look like droid parts, you know, so here's, you know, an arm from like a protocol droid or something like that, or maybe a battle droid. And clocks you know continues walking past some of these people and actually walks past some um who uh in solo there were some people in the bar that were missing like from their jaw up um oh just... yes oh wow those were terrifying yeah and these you know these people have had like a protocol droid head kind of replaced from the jaw up and he does an especial nod to them you know, and kind of maybe claps one of them on the back and um, steps out the front door into the busy street. And as he opens the door, the camera swivels around and we see inside the warehouse. And there's a, a astonishing number of damaged people who are inside this warehouse where that's kind of been made into like living quarters or uh, support for people who were uh, not treated well by the empire. Wow, that is that is dark, dark stuff. Uh, and if any of that's too dark, just let me know. No, Let's no, no. I'll roll it I back. Think, like, unless any, does anyone else would need to, to need to roll anything? And learning learn the truth is your angle. And see that that colors so much of what Clux uh, has to deal with on a day to day basis, and he has counselors telling him to let it go right that's that's fascinating but it's probably not healthy for him to be doing this yeah <laughs> not at all does anyone have questions they want to ask of that scene no it was awesome and yeah. self-contained yeah i like it i like it too cool I, I have to ask uh, when Ava Veer is done with her turn at the restaurant where does she go back to what's the kind of place that she lives in uh, I think she has a sleeping tube right like um, oh like a coffin a, hotel kind of deal yeah like a it's a coffin yes. apartment kind of deal right it's a large house and you can uh get in your it's it's basically you know from the clone wars where the things that the clone slept in yeah oh like yeah that one. oh, oh like that, okay like that that's just a tube and it's basically a bed and there's a little ridge where you can put up stuff but that that's basically it and that's she only uses that to sleep and she mostly um lives for her either for her job or at the restaurant and uh, and tries to and and she has to switch a lot because there are people after her 
right? So this is not a this is not a thing where she's been staying for super long. She just switches these apartment coffin apartments. And her angles push the edge. Yeah. What is what does that mean? How do we see that when we see her day to day life? You don't see it in her day to day life. That's the point of it. Got it. Our day to day life is mostly just uh, trying to stay below the radar of anything. And to push the edge is just these jobs that she does, just to see if she still has got it, whatever it means. Right. That's why she's a muscle on these things, just to feel the adrenaline go through her body again. But she doesn't do that in her private. She tries to avoid that in her day to day life because, hey, you know, can if you push the edge too hard, it will push back. And yeah, well, that's fascinating. Nice. Does everyone, everyone feel like you got a chance to? show or explore what you wanted to with your day-to-day in your life oh check in with each of you sci-fi source sci sci-far six uh and then eighth of the year and clocks all right good thank you all so much for sharing that with me that was fascinating and delightful and super cyberpunk i love the coffin hotel and the uh, the, the the like therapy sessions and the gig working uh, divorce counseling mediation that's just I, I would go do cyberpunk missions as well you, you all have chosen wisely in your side gig we snap back to the beautiful Octoria hotel interior the door so slides into it's not one of those doors that open in and out it's a door that actually slides into the wall itself and you who's standing on the outside of the door when the door opens up because i remember like the three of you there was at least one person who was like back in in support position so i don't want to place all three of you right in front of the door i can stand right in front of the door if uh, if that might be a dangerous situation or I mean, can't hurt if somebody gets gets shot at. Should be me that, that, for that, some reason. That that seems right. What about uh, Sci Sci Far Six? Are you behind Ava? Or are you back back or what? Um. Well, I think Clox was the one who got the door open, so I would assume that I'm back behind them just because their rules are right up front. But not like I'm hanging back, just that. There's only so much room in front of the door. Nice. Cool. Uh, so door opens up, Ava in front, Sai Sai not far behind. You see inside that um, Ms. or Miss uh, Chindify is in like a tracksuit. It's a stylish tracksuit, but she's obviously, she steps off of this treadmill and grabs a towel like throws it over her head to wipe a little bit and says bay bay i told you i i need this time and I'm, i will say hello pretty we've got a business proposition for you and then i stuck to the side so sorry, so i can't do her thing she pauses takes the towel off and slides it around her neck, looks at the two of you, looks past you, looks at the floor behind you. Oh, you're muted, Sherry. Don't know, that's not hurt anymore. She just all of your step for a while. It's just most of them unhurt. Um, she goes, and, she, and the hurtlet is fine. All right. Um, Mostly. <laughs> the hurtlet is absolutely fine and her baby as well. Um, and she steps forward and she goes, I'm very sorry to interrupt your day, 
um, we are the precursor. This is a situation that will only get worse if we aren't able to handle it. Um, and I apologize for the situation. It is not my favored way to approach a client. Um, and she will sort of turn the, the um, I guess the document signing thing towards her. She goes, our assignment is to ask you to sign over a set of shares from PIN to this corporation. You know, it's clearly a thing. Um, she goes, I don't have any sense that there's any remuneration planned other than that if this is taken care of at this point, you will not have any further complications. Am I to understand that if I do not comply with this request, you are here to hurt me? Um, and she sort of stops and goes, uh, actually, no, on the contrary, we will go and be killed and then they will send in a more, um, I should say, uh, convincing crew. We will get as convincing as they need to be. I see. Well, you're obviously more competent than my security team. She kind of goes, mm, we are perhaps more well researched in this moment. Perhaps. Whatever you are being offered to do this job. I'm sure that I can double it. And she laughs and she goes, I'm sure that it is a nuts for you. <laughs> um, and she steps and she goes, and she looks at the others and she goes, but we will be dead if we leave this place without your signature. I see. Well, that is a conundrum. There's also the factor that this is one job as opposed to if we flip on this job, we lose a lifetime worth of jobs going forward. I see. Yeah. Well, you're obviously able to circumvent my security team. I can't guarantee that whoever has hired you will not seek retribution if you choose not to complete this job, but I can offer you double what was offered for this particular job and for future employment. You could replace my security team. I'd like to keep Bayside if possible but the others have obviously become very unnecessary. I, I think Sai Sai looks at the, the others. I don't like being steadily employed. I like doing my own stuff. So, sorry, that's not going to work for me. And I'm sorry, Ms. Chenda, there would be an issue because you do not want your security team to have a price on their head because that would bring more danger to you. True. Also, if we flip on this, you can never be sure we'll flip on it, something else. The better offer comes along. Wouldn't I wouldn't hire people on that, on those grounds. But we understand there's been some change in your life and you're looking for a way to make this work. My guess is that, and she sort of uh, considers, you're in a transition. My life is always in transition. I'm sure if you've done your research, you're aware that I have worked for 14 different corporations in the last eight years. 
13 of which you uh you crashed after you're working there by selling all of their their shares as a great junk drop into the earth. So but the most recent you seem to have changed your ways, and that's why I say transition. You have done your homework. Every corporate person that he's talked to has said they would happily hire you and bring you in. And yet you are looking for some sort of challenge that they cannot define? I am. Oh, it's one they can't understand. The people in the world where I live only understand power and credits can't understand what would motivate me because neither of those things are important to me except to get me to what I want. So what do you want? Just to ask the obvious question here. I want to destroy this place. This, ho this hotel? This planet? This city? This structure, this society, this empire. And I've been doing it one corporation at a time, bringing these greedy bastards to their knees and breaking them, taking them to the summit of what they thought that they wanted and slipping it all away. They're still eating out of your hand. I keep thinking that that glimpse of the summit, they can hold on to. If I sign over all of my holdings, I lose not only the power and credits I have amassed over the last eight years, but I lose face. I lose the capability to tempt these bastards to the sun. That's not necessarily true. Um, if you sign over all your credits, which you've stated don't mean anything to you, it's really about bringing them down. That's our contract. And if anything beyond that happens, um, that's not a part of our contract. And if transferring credits through your secure method, which is fairly unique, is required um, access in some way that might be opened up to you might allow you to go after a corporation that um, has the wherewithal to hire us. And if we're unsuccessful, the people after us. Right. That is a possible outcome. And would any of the three of you be interested in sharing with me enough to give me a head start? Um, just sort of steps and goes. Kept that well outside of our circle um, and then she sort of turns the um, essentially the thing that needs to be signed she goes but there's always serial numbers on these isn't there um, and so she'll turn it around and they'll take a look at it she goes might as well see what we can figure out i have no problem investigating that for me So you're proposing 
that I continue with this transaction and then you are offering to work with me to find out who set up this particular job? Yes. I, she turns to glass. Does that sound reasonable to you? I assume we're getting paid for that. I mean, that would only be fair, right? Truth be told, this will not completely break me. And I would have some rainy day funds that I could use to fund this particular operation. So yes, I, I would pay you. I'm oh. just trying to set the parameters. Our job is for the transfer to happen your wants is to bring everyone down, including the people associated, you know, who hired us to come in and, and get this from you. So it's very possible that this is an opening for you where you can show the money isn't important to you. It's actually bringing them down. And when you bring them down, it will be even more of a... Uh, stabilizing event, something that takes your reputation even higher. It could. I won't argue that. I will say that it will present a new challenge because I will be an outsider. She wish to stay an insider. Um, and so give them the name, give her the name of the corporate guy that she talked to and says, they're willing to offer a very high sign-on bonus. All right, so let's put this down to a roll to see if you have uh, convinced Rolls. Cindify. Okay, so let's see here. Um, we can, I've got influence of That's two. Seems and appropriate. Empathy yeah. of two. And let's see, is there anything I can spend to give myself another die? That is a great question. Can we jump over to our rules to make sure? Okay. Um, so I think that the threat level here is pretty extreme. Uh, now, this game's rejiggered the whole three different situations for die rolls. Mm -hmm. It's all in threat level, and the threat level will immediately pour over to the consequences on a failure. So I think the threat level, we're going to call it a level three threat. The effect, I think you've argued your way to having a standard effect. It would have had a very small effect, but you have done a good job of laying out her future actions so that this doesn't just destroy what she's worked for. It just tilts it. Um, so yeah, threat level three, effect level standard. Now, your question of what can you do to get more? Uh, you can push or you can gain dice from an assist. assist. And I think, since, I think since I talked and said, hey, you know, this is our part of the job, I'll assist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. That's uh, an extra die. Yes, and that costs a stress for clocks, and you will gain another die. Okay. Um, and I think I will push as well. Um, so it's a push or assist. Oh, push. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, well, I know. In some, in some games, it's like in some force yeah, of the dark, can you can. This keep one, on. but... Yeah, exactly. Okay. That sounds good. So I'm at five dice. Okay. Good luck. I've got a five. Okay. So your best die is a five. Partial success. You do it, but also suffer a consequence. Harm, reduced effect, lost opportunity, or complication. So I think that the complication, yeah, let's see how this goes. So she's considering it, and then there's a soft um, chime, and you hear the voice of chess 
come through one of the loudspeakers. You say, Miss Phi, I have been monitoring this conversation. Are you under threat? And Miss Phi looks at the three of you, assessing. What do you do? Um, and I, I think Sai kind of stands there because clearly we haven't threatened her with violence at all. True. And I think she says, I would consider this a negotiation. Thank you, Chess. I am not under threat, however, I will be checking out today. And Chess says, I am sorry to see you leave. You have been an excellent guest. I hope that you enjoyed your stay at the Octoria Hotel. I have, without a doubt. You cared for everything that I needed. She takes the clipboard. She imprints her fingerprint. You see that there's like a little metal that kind of raises up on her, her fingerprint. She presses that and then there's a, a key code sequence. And uh, a few moments pass and you all three of you would hear because Janice is not sure who's running the op. He doesn't care. But he comes through and says, congratulations, team. It seems that you have completed the transaction successfully. This run is at an end. I will be transferring the credits for the that we have previously negotiated to your accounts immediately. Nice. Thank you for your good work. Clocks, where were you again? So I was uh, at the door. I opened it. I was standing in the doorway. Sci Sci Far Six was doing the talking, but I think from time to time I chimed in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. whenever Chess spoke up, I stepped further back from the door towards where the interface is. Because, um, you know, hey, maybe I need to shut things down. And then I think. Sci Sci Far Six said this is a negotiation, and I kind of froze. So that's kind of where I am. Mm -hmm. Nice. You're looking at the display when you see a uh, an Abek like a quick display come across, warning, um, warning, and uh, then over the loudspeakers you hear warning. While you are not guests, you are currently present in an area that has been targeted by an external military presence. Oh. Oh. I think we should be exiting. Um, I looked to Chenda. Well, I'm no longer a guest. And that's when you hear the explosion. Mm-hmm. Uh, as something has hit the exterior, you're inside, so it hits the kitchen. Uh, oh, cool. And the kitchen explodes, so there's splinters of door, wall, and everything thrown down the hall. The security team was still in the kitchen, right? They were. And, oh, and okay. I, I turned to Chenda and I go, quick, do you have a stem? We got to get your uh, bodyguard up. Um, and, and essentially, she's like, because she doesn't know where to keep the stuff, but there's got to be like a first aid kit here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's the that so, Chinda like goes over, rips open a, a first aid kit and tosses okay. you a little yeah. stem. And uh, that's tosses it. you I, a pair of them because it's okay. A, yeah, it's, it's a her glue. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And I think that's it is that that the first thing she would do is go to wake up the her so. Nice. Yeah, but take take Chanda with you because she needs to explain the situation to the her Probably, oh. probably a good choice, Cindy says, as you guys are moving through the hallway. Uh, <laughs> clocks, yeah, it looks like Sai Sai Farsai is heading towards the front door with Chinda, where you guys had deposited the Herglick. Um, and 
you're still in the hallway when that door to the the like barracks you know the the bedding where the two guards were opens up they finally slice their way uh out and they come out with blaster pistols because they don't carry like blaster rifles in the middle of her nice hotel apartment uh they don't know what's going on (laughs) other than a missile just hit this place and they don't know you what do you do clocks um so i reference chess and i say chess you've been monitoring the situation we're exiting with a former guest um and we uh I understand that you don't want to protect the, you know, you no longer have a guest here to protect. However, you should make sure that the, your facility is taken care of. Please launch countermeasures. And I kind of nod to the to the soldiers that come out and say, you know, we should all be leaving with our, with uh, Chindra. Awesome. Let's see yeah. you convince them. That's, yeah. that's all logical. Let's see if they're, uh, guys who screwed assist. up. <laughs> what is okay. uh, what is Ava doing? Because I'm really curious. This is, things are starting to get really hectic right now. Oh well, there are people. They have exploded the doorway, and I assume we researched and we f- did we figure out an alternative route out of these of this this room because we would have researched. I assume you that. you can flash back to that. If yeah. You would like. Okay, okay. I'm not good at researching, though. Um, but, uh, you know... You, the player, can flash back to... Yeah, what okay. Has like, you don't need to make a roll. Oh, okay. We just do okay. a flashback so, mechanic. Yeah, okay. Then a flashback mechanic here and uh, claim that there is actually a service entrance for droids. Okay, it's, nice. It's not... It's not um it's not made for units or units adjacents, but the, the, I mean it's where there's... chess deploys is is droid drone yeah. hybrid things. I like that. Yeah. I really like yeah. that. However, uh based on the flashback, so you invoke a role mm-hmm. for an action in the past that impacts the current situation, adding to but not changing what's established in the fiction. So I set a cost. I think that's it. There's no role. Okay, cool. Sorry. Mm-hmm. It's just you cool. set a cost. I'm gonna say one. It'll be one stress to oh, say well, that that's okay. a thing you've done. Mm-hmm. Boom. You've got it. Okay. Cool. Wait. So let's cycle back to clocks. Uh, I assume Ava, you're probably guiding people, especially once the Herglick is awoken. I'm, I'm pointing the people to where I'm. I'm bring up Maria here because um, when they have, I, I try to set up a bar- bar- barrier, maybe. Yeah, I try to set up a barrier because, I mean, they're not the only ones who got explosives, right? So just explode the hallway a little. Mm-hmm. Fine. Just to create an obstacle so we can get away without okay. being shot at a lot. So, Klox, let's see how you convince these two security team members. So I'm not really appealing to them, so I don't think empathy applies. I think it would be smartness by addressing chess. Right? That seems appropriate. Okay, and then I have help from Sci Sci Far Six. Because I don't know that done. any of my skills help with that. Eh, it's got to. Let's see. Um, hacking, rigging, sciences, observation might be. Sure. Sure. Okay. And then I'm actually going to spend a piece of gear. Ooh, fun. The med kit that came from, you know, it wasn't on the side of the wall. I tossed it to Sci Sci Far Six to help them uh, wake up Bay, the Herglick. Yeah, I don't know if that applies to this role specifically, though. The reason I say that is because the guards now see that I'm helping out the other guards and Chindra. Okay, yeah. that that makes sense. That yeah. that'll get you. There we go. All right. So approach plus skill ratings. Bonus dice from pusher assist. And then the gear is going to be a glitch die, I think. Or is that? Okay. No. Oh, the... your, you know, your glitch is your cyberware. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Cool. Um, Actually. Okay. Instead of the med kit, if there's some hesitancy on that, I could bring in the wireless interface, which would be the glitch die, because that's what my interface to chess, right? Oh, yes. Let's do that. Because that's fun. Let's... I really like the glitch die. Let's thing. do that. Okay. So that's that's actually in a dice. way kind of miss, wish. I like the glitch a lot, and it's a the, the way the game's designed. It doesn't use it as much as I want, 
Like, you know, does that make sense? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. So that's six dice with the first die that appears being the glitch die. Yes. Let me roll that. Okay. Okay. Glitch so the glitch die was a golden, four. Uh -huh. And you got a six, a full success. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the guys hesitate for a moment. And Jindafai says, work with them. Let's go. And she goes with you, side side far six, you lean down, you, you pop a couple stems, and, and there's a moment. Uh, and, then, and then it's just. Oh, oh, man. Am I fired? No, but we've got to go. Come on. Oh, okay. And she. Gets up, and then you hear another missile hit the like one of the front rooms, and glass gets thrown across. And she steps in front, and it just bounces off of her skin as she covers over you, Sai Sai, as well as Chindify. So, Ava, uh, as you are getting people towards that exit, you see that there are a couple of individuals who've come up on little jetpacks and they've stepped into the kitchen area. They have blaster rifles, and uh, yeah, how, how, what do you want to do there? Okay, uh, having demolition tools would max out my gear now. Ooh. Oh, I could have a special grenade, maybe? That's just one, I think. Yeah, I have grenades. <laughs> so I still have, so I, I love a grenade at them and say, hey, look, grenade. Um, <laughs> Nice. Cool. Let's let's do some uh so I guess you're going with ranged combat because you're throwing yeah. something right because you're yes, not using your yes. cyber karate. No. No. Also, I mean I have telescope arms, right? I could just <laughs> plonk it right right over there. Look, grenade. <laughs> and then uh, let it, uh, just drop it next to them. Oh, that sounds fun. Let's do that. Uh let's mm -hmm. let's have you Okay, I'll need of course, I haven't opened up the rolling dice by now because I thought I had time. No, I didn't think at all. Yeah. Um, what do I roll now? Remind me. Yeah, no problem. So you look amongst your approaches, aggression, empathy, smartness, mm -hmm. and caution. Uh, feels like aggression, but but yeah. you go with whatever you want. Yeah, and you no, choose a skill. A, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. You choose a skill. Uh huh. And then um i think what so the one part and i'll kind and of I'd use on. d6s yeah. right yes you're rolling d6s uh okay. so yeah you go oh gear gear does apply okay so the the gear will add another die as okay. well and that's the number of d6s you're rolling okay uh the threat level here is a th threat level of three and the okay. effect, I think, is is going to be a pretty significant effect because you're dropping a grenade in their in their faces. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, I'm I'm just rolling them and hope that yep. one of them rolls a six, right? Exactly. Yeah, I want two of them roll a six actually. Oh wow, so. that is a critical effect. Uh, you succeed and gain an extra benefit. I'm thinking increased effect that that you you know these guys weren't ready. For someone to just literally drop a grenade right in their lap, does that feel fair? Or was there another? Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've warned <laughs> them. Oh, but, but the the great effect could just be that it creates actually a bit of an obstacle when the grenade explodes, so they can just even if those who or their colleagues Ooh, like who weren't yeah, in the explosion the... will still have to get through the rubble before. Yeah, the yeah, like I think of the explosion. Boom! It sends them out. We see a couple of silhouettes from the flames and then the 71st floor above it just crumples down and in uh which causes your entire world to to shake but it also means that there's no one they can't easily just jetpack in that's your great effects that that work with where yep. you're mm -hmm. okay and awesome. if i read the special grenade thingy here right there are two little uh, boxes beneath that be behind it that means i have two grenades i can use it twice right uh, as I am looking, special grenade. Yes, you have two uses of it. Mm, yes. Okay, cool. So you've chosen special grenade as one of your things, and you just dropped one of the special grenades. So you have one left. I, I clicked those. Is that okay? I just want to make sure you know. Sweet. I have clicked them. I've already clicked them. So okay. Oh, you you're you're them. on the 
You're, you're not using the side by side. Sorry. Oh no, I, I I don't. I I have an easier time scrolling up and down than scrolling over. Totally cool. That's that's my whole thing of doing the two versions. Is so like I know I'm gonna have to watch two oh. tabs, so I didn't okay, guess okay. which one you had. Sweet. I, yeah, I'll just click these as well. And then checking in on gear, you had you were a normal load, which means that you had five. You've used yep. four of those five. Just as a heads yes. up. Yes. No yes, I know. I'm aware. Sweet. Uh, that is awesome. So huge explosion. Everything shakes. Uh, clocks, you've convinced these two guards with Chinda backing you up. They're not going to shoot at you guys. There are three guards left. The Herglick and these two uh, who were in the barracks and slept through and are 100% going to get fired after this. Uh, but they might live. So I assume Sai Sai or Clocks, you're uh, directing them to the flashback enabled droid. Uh, droid uh, I guess it's a dumb waiter in a way, right? Oh, yeah, awesome. That's a good idea. Sweet. As you guys head over to that, of course, there's a moment where Bay says, uh, I can't really fit in there, Miss Spy. Uh, I'll, I'll take the stairs. Um, that's interesting. Uh, and Chinda says, oh, um, yes, please be. She reaches up and kind of puts her hands around Bay's gigantic hands. Says, be safe. And Bay will give you guys like a little salute and she'll start ambling her way and smashes down a door to get to the corridor. I think um, Clocks will speak up and say, uh, um, there has to be a loading dock around here, right? I mean, they can't bring up furniture and stuff like that without having space. So it won't be comfortable, but it might be the best place for Ray Bay to go. Um, and it would probably be in the same section where this droid dumbwaiter is. So oh, do you want to do a flashback? Um, so it's a flashback that you've done that research and discover it? Yeah, yeah, I'll cool. do that. Yeah. All right, uh, I'll say that that's standard. Um, it, it all makes sense to me, likely to have occurred. So one stress, and yep, there is a uh, freight elevator. You direct Bay, and she'll go get in, and and she'll and say, I... "Thanks, my feet are killing me. You just don't know." Um, you should know it's not as safe as the droid waiter, dumb waiter, but you know, I think you can handle it. And yeah. I think the flashback is us going back, and these are all ways that we looked at coming in but discarded them because we thought going in as uh, help was a much safer way than going through the droid dumbwaiter or going through the loading dock. Yeah. Nice. I like it. Okay. And then I want to do not a flashback, but a pre-flash. Um, <laughs> so know what we this have is. this like a gear thing and I don't know, there's nothing, but I want to say that I know someone who can get a ride for us up to that loading dock like essentially uh um and i think that i want it to be like a thing that doesn't look like a uh a taxi like literally that it's going to be like a moving truck or something that pulls or, or up like to a garbage the, truck or a garbage truck yeah i think i know someone who like <laughs> who is always uh yeah so yeah garbage truck would be great um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I will. I will essentially hit the thing and say, "Can you get that there?" And so we need it. Is you know, ASAP, ASAP. You know, ASAP. And, uh, okay. ASAP. So, uh, by the way, we're we're on the edge of break, but let's let's figure this out. We've got two options to approach this. We can either, well, it's a pre-flash. We call it a flashback. You pay some stress, and the person is there. Or we can make an active engage role where you're looking out for it and you take an action role to contact this person and bring them to you. Which would you rather? I'm fine with spending um, a stress. Okay. So, yeah. I don't think this is un, un, an elaborate, uh, unlikely thing. Seems kind of standard. Uh, it's gar- probably a garbage family room. member, right? You it's, know? GB, it's GB, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's got to oh, be yeah. GB. So oh, yeah, Jimmy. I yeah. thought we were on my way for a second. No, we period. were, but I was like, wait, should I say have my character like be there? No, it's a pilot. So, but no, it's Jimmy perfect. Oh, come on. Do you really, do you honestly think that Court would be 
inconspicuous? No. <laughs> so GB, the garbage bot, uh, pilots a garbage trowel and will be your escape vehicle, your very sexy escape vehicle. Sweet. So you guys are headed down the droid dumbwaiter, getting out of here, uh, heading to sub basement two to meet up with the garbage scowl. And that's where we'll take our mid game break. The dumb waiter for the droids that you guys jumped into, it is not made for comfort. So it is definitely shooting straight down a tunnel. There's some pneumatic pressures uh, that control your descent because, of course, they don't want to hurt the hardware, but it's none too gentle. Um, and just because it's a one shot, I'm going to say that each of you take a stress. You can resist this if you want, but then you're, you know, potentially going to take more stress saying uh, you're a okay so <laughs> exactly gb has free will he earned creds on the side doing evacuations exactly he's he's got a little bbs board where people can contact with him and you know, need out of a bad situation take out the trash with gb uh and the three of you along with miss Fi and her two security guards all <laughs> come out into this huge Duracrete underground subterranean garage. You see there are a bunch of beautiful speeders here. Not as many as uh, like, not as many as you might imagine, right? Because this is exclusive. It's very posh. It's hyper, hyper expensive. So there are a few um, spiders and other hyper, hyper expensive um, posh luxury elite class speeders and then at the end idling is a little hovering garbage truck like a garbage scowl speeder truck type deal uh, and when the six of you are joined by the herglick uh, there is a little meep meep and you see that there is an basically an astromech droid uh, that is yellow and grimy and it's in the front seat. I wave. <laughs> wave them over. Like a little antenna comes up and kind of rotates like a wave. Yeah, can we have him come up to us? Because the herd, like, that's a long walk for her. That's true. Yeah, so he, he comes along. You, you direct the uh, GB and uh, it brings the, cow, the scowl closer and without even asking questions, Bayside will climb into the back. And it, it's one of those, like the whole thing kind of tips over for a little bit when the hard click steps into the back. And Chindafai looks and says, I am not getting in the back. Okay, then be sure to cover your face and uh, I will get in the back. Cool, she'll pull, I guess she got like that towel, right? Like she'll kind of pull the towel over a little bit like a hoodie and she, climbs up into the front seat. She directs the two security guards who are still technically employed by her to get in the back as well. What about clocks? So clocks is going to get in the front um, next to GB. Um, he looks close enough to a worker and he needs to be the eyes and ears of the operation. Okay, cool, cool. Can what you about get on Ava? Top of, can you get on top of the skull? Ava can. Sure, then she does. And one of the security guards looks up. That looks very unsafe. <laughs> she just laughs and says, yes, it does, doesn't it? Nice. Uh, and as, as everybody is all set up and ready to go, I, I believe that GB will use the voice modulator in the front dash. Everyone, please be careful. There is high fire ordinance outside of this building. I assume you are the targets. Correct. <laughs> Very well. And then the, the little gate, right? And it starts heading up and then you see daylight outside. But it's that murky, smoggy daylight. Uh, you can hear the river outside as the GB pulls out. And as Ava, as soon as you are able to look up, you see there's just gouts, gouts of flame from the 70th floor 
there's still fire suppressant work on it from some of the protocol droids but the, yeah what what was done to that level was significant wasn't yeah. all us though no no it was a lot then it was like 90 percent then you just had a grenade they sent several missiles into the side of the building and it's it's entirely possible that that floor may may not be recoverable but i think at this point i'd like to know who is directing gb to make sure that you are not uh spotted by this corporate hit team as you try to make your escape oh, i think i'm doing that i think clocks is in the front talking with gb and you know communicating somewhat and um he he points out no 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 as we leave you need to literally stop and pick up that garbage and dump it in the back and then keep going because if you don't then they're going to get you know we're going to get clocked so you need to do this periodically i know it'll be slow but otherwise it'll be obvious slowest getaway ever stinkiest getaway ever <laughs> gp has no olfactory so gp doesn't care about that uh so let's put it to a roll and see if you are able to make your getaway um so again i think that's smartness it could be caution Ooh, it feels cautiony if you want to go with caution okay. that seems let's cool. do caution um and observation yeah okay And you know, I think this game did away with Devil's Bargain as well. I, I don't see where it is in the game. Yeah, I think we talked about that last time that oh. there is no Devil's Bargain in this game. Yeah, I think we did. That's right. <laughs> I forget these things. I'm sorry. So I'm going to roll that and let's see how that looks. Hey, I got a six. Wow, that that looks good then. So, following your instructions, GB is able to slowly get out, and those little arms go, and it picks up certain trash cans and dumps it. And of course, when it dumps, right, the, the trash comes down over Sai Sai and the and Bayside. Bayside will like come on, put her big arms over you, Sai Sai, and a couple of the security guys like slide in underneath her as well. And so she tries to cover you guys from getting hit from anything, but it's stinky. And I know. And should I ask her how far along she is and um, when the baby's due? Oh, yeah. She's super excited. She she gleefully shares with you as you guys are making the slowest getaway ever. Um, and it, it turns out that she's just a month away from giving birth that really she isn't supposed to be working right now, but... You know, she didn't want to leave Fi out in the lurch. And so they worked on this whole thing. And actually, she's supposed to be off tomorrow. And she, she kind of gabbers away. But then circles back around. We think it's going to be a boy. And, and we've already got a few names picked out. So I think that we actually see on camera, we see like a sharpshooter or a spotter, you know, scanning. And we see traffic. And, you know, he's highlighting different vehicles. And maybe they're actually damaging different vehicles. And he, he highlights this garbage scow that's going off. And he's like, he highlights it. And then he sees GB dump trash in the back. And he unhighlights it so the sharp so the sharpshooters don't actually hit it. And he watches it for a little bit. And it keeps dumping trash and just going along its merry way. And he's like, okay. And then goes back to the scanning. Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah, of course, Abe is getting <laughs> bored. I would shot you. Good thing that he doesn't see Ava and her playing with her grenade <laughs> on top of that garbage skull. skull so, yeah. Sweet. Uh, so I think you guys pull the fade from the Octoria Hotel. Where does GB drop off the lot of you? Um, 
gosh, I think of all of us, I have the best place to go back to, which is the kind of family place. Oh man, that sounds fun. Okay. So I think that's it because we got to stop and we got to get cleaned up and then we got to figure out where to go. So, and, and I think Chindify, I think she's going to, do you imagine, that, like, I'm, I'm trying to suss it out. Do you guys think, oh, you're going to convince Chindify to like stick around with you guys? Or since she's got three security team members and probably has a few of her um, own things going on, she takes off. Uh, I think. I think she goes that that Sai Sai will say, I'm not sure if we're supposed to be the targets as well. Um, but I'm willing to use what contacts I have to try to figure out who called this. So to a certain extent, I think Steven thinks that we're now on a different job for Chinda, right? Yeah. So we're here to help Chinda do something. So she can go off and do her own thing, but, you know, we're going to, you know, try we to protect to know her. She, yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to yeah. know what, what she needs. Yeah. Okay. And I think, I think uh, if, if we're going somewhere with her, maybe she should just pick the spot before we, before we endanger your family, Sai Sai. I mean, um, she must have a safe house, right? She does. Like There's that. a part of me that selfishly Ooh. loves the idea of going back to Sai Sai's house, though. Like from while it may be slightly illogical uh, and and less safe, it seems more interesting and personal and and so maybe gonna... we go to Sai Sai's place and uh, Chanda Fai goes to her own place and we kind of make plans to meet up when we've got all the information and stuff. Yeah, done. I like that. I like that. She's got a safe house. She gives you guys the um, directions and the passcode to get inside, and she and her team are going to head that way. Uh, she'll just ride with GB and you guys get dropped off to settle stuff up and work on work the job as she goes to her place where she's going to hide out. She feels that the hit on the hotel was definitely aimed at her, not you. But maybe she's wrong. Um, it's... All I'm saying is I'm going to guilt Janice for this, if that makes any sense. Guilt Janice? If Janice set you up how it feels maybe we should visit him and have a little discussion about what happened there it um, isn't efficient to have to discuss payback now until we get clear of chin chinda so yeah yeah, yeah. sure yeah, we sure should... no i i mean in, in the foreseeable future though however we can suggest to chinda i i don't know how far this rabbit hole goes but it's very possible that Chinda's target that she's bringing down would be related to Janice, Janice, so very well could bring Janice down as well. Janice being a fixer uh, means that he works for a lot of different clients. He's kind of a middleman, but yeah, if it gets traced through a thing he set up that one of the people who, the corporations, it will, will look bad for him. It may not immediately bring him down, but he's going to be taken down a tier or two in faction speak for that. For sure. Yeah, so if word gets out that Jen has set us up for, you know, essentially a do then kill, you know, be killed thing, his mm -hmm. rep will go way down. So no, no runners will want to work for him without fleecing him for every possible credit yeah yeah that's very true you've got some leverage there since you survived uh you guys come in to the uh, did you say house or apartment complex that's like been subdivided it's, it's it is literally like three apartments like mm -hmm. that they've sort of taken the wall out between two of them oh that's cool so there's like three doors to get in. One of the one in the back is pretty much just all beds. People sleep in shifts according to like when they work and everything. Um, and it's just kind of. And then there's uh, the there's like three little kitchens, which is good because you know people are always having a little something and and those kinds of things. And then it's like couches and um, and then the things that you need to to live. So you know all everyone's uh, sort of communication devices and that sort of stuff. Cool. I'd imagine there are uh, 
like there are certain significant portions of the floor that are covered with cables where they're running electricity. Maybe they're even stealing it off of a pole somewhere. Yeah. They've strung it out. There's a bunch of like the daisy chain extension cords to carry feed and, and power and juice and all that stuff. And you three appear and soon I comes up and she comes close like a greeting hug and it goes oh my stars what what did you do did you roll it's, in the it's river? a hard life she goes, <laughs> she goes, no <clears throat> i literally rode in a garbage truck oh uh, why did, was it a dare wait is this on somewhere mm -hmm. Is this on a kitsune feed or something? Is this some kind of challenge? No, no, Should no. I be taking the challenge? You should not be taking the garbage scow challenge. No, do not. Oh, thanks, stars. I just, who are your friends? And I say, this is Clux. This is Ava. We all need showers. Um, yes. I, I wrote <laughs> on the garbage scow. I don't need a shower. Oh, okay. She's in good shape. Oh, just uh, watch your backs, Ava. Yeah, I'll watch your backs before something goes wrong. Which, and I look at the kid, totally could. Uh, and so I assume Sai Sai and Clocks, you guys will uh, cycle to one of the showers and Suna will say, I'm Suna, what's your name? Or do you have a secret name? Is that your real name? That's that my real name. name. That's not my, what is the street name? You know, like, like your handle. Oh, no, I had a handle once. I don't want to have a handle again. Oh, what happened to your handle before? Uh, kind of went wrong. Oh. Yeah. Well, Sai Sai and I, we, we talk about everything. So you can tell me what went wrong. <sighs> Um, well, I kind of lost my arms and then they dropped me out of the service. The service? Yeah. My what handle kind of was service? TK24, 2748. So can't probably she guess. squeals what kind of excitedly and like grabs your, what are your arms? You were a, you were a stormtrooper? I was a stormtrooper, yeah. And she says it too loud and there's like a little hollow that's playing like commercial stuff it's about 80 percent commercials and 20 percent actual content that are happening and she says oh oh she reaches over to a box of like pocky sticks you know and she hands you a pocky stick what was that like being a stormtrooper it looks terrible I bet yeah those it was things stinky right inside the, the they're the worst really um i mean yeah I sweat so bad yeah, yeah, they have these body gloves that you have to wear and they are catching up the sweat. That's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to keep you warm when it's cold and cold when it's warm. But actually, they do the opposite. Oh, this sounds like the worst. It is I've read worst. so much fanfic about stormtroopers, so I know a lot. Yeah, the fanfic doesn't get to it justice. Not at all. It's just, it's better than sitting in a mining colony where it's always cold and you get radiation sickness a lot but you were in a mining colony before you became a stormtrooper well i came from somewhere kid everybody comes from somewhere i came from here so yeah well it looks a bit like the mining colony minus the fact that it's not cold and you don't seem to be dying you don't seem to have a lot of radiation sickness no i don't i don't, I don't have any radiation sickness but um what on you the, the other day i i you know I, I like i like bruised my arm pretty bad it was the worst. Uh, at least you have an arm to that you can bruise so oh. don't expect pity from me oh she kind of crumples in like she just said the worst thing ever and she like pulls her knees up and just hugs her knees for a second and says, I'm so sorry. Come on, kid. I'm just I'm having so I'm sorry. just having it's okay. I'm just kidding. I didn't want to hurt your feelings. We don't get guests over. Sasa never brings anyone from work. So you, you must be really special. 
Mm, okay, I guess. Um, never been special to anyone before, so she's pretty special too. Tell me about her. Oh, Sai Sai, see, um, our parents aren't, aren't around, and Sai Sai kind of stepped up, and she's been taking care of me for as long as I can remember, and she she has the worst job the worst job she doesn't talk about it but it's pretty terrible i um i followed her to work once and um and then i looked it up what the corporations that she she does work for and mediations for uh you know domestic partnership severances and i think that's divorce but i'm not entirely sure because everybody talks about it in like indirectly but it sounds really intense I'm sure she's very good at that. Sai so is good at intense interpersonal stuff. Right. I think. I, I don't know anything about that. I'm good at punching people. Really? Yeah, really. They teach you all that in Stormtrooper <laughs> school, academy school? No, they mostly teach me how to polish my armor, actually. Do you still have your armor? No. I mean, it was broken, obviously, when they cut, when someone thought it would be a good idea to cut my arms off, so. What happened? Did you run into a rancor? <laughs> no. Now, look, kid, that, that's, let's not get too much into that, okay? Oh, oh, right, right. I'm sorry. I just, I, I just, I think I want to be a, um, I want to be a reporter. So I like asking questions. I'm very nosy. Okay, that's fine. Just so you're at. Uh, I should write a story up. about you, Ava. What do you think? Please don't. No, don't. I could change your name. Yeah, just don't, kid. Just. Come on. No. Ex stormtrooper no. who got cybernetic arm replacements and. Yeah, exactly. Does... That's why you shouldn't talk. That's what you shouldn't write about. Oh, but it sounds so cool. It's not. Can I, can I like write fanfic about you then? Or just like then no <sighs> one will read it pretty much over. <laughs> I can't, look, I can't stop you from doing that, but I won't, so. Cool. But I'd ask you to not, to not do that. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you that I'm not going to. Where is Sai Sai anyway? How long can somebody take a shower? I'm, I better go look and see if she's okay. Well, the water pressure's terrible, but okay, you you just want to escape our conversation. That's fine. I understand. I'm gone by that point in time because I want to escape that conversation. You you don't have to put that to a roll. She's not going to chase after you. She's just instead going to pull out a small little cyber deck and like a screen pops up out of it and she starts tapping away. It's a dark and stormy she's, night. <laughs> she's outlining her plot first. Yes, yes. <laughs> cool. Uh, so clocks. I imagine that, like your cybernetics are, you could get them wet and everything, right? But I think it's one of those sonic shower kind of things. Oh, you cool. clean up okay. all that kind of stuff. Um, I probably at my place I have like a a, a case that I pop on the back. You know, the Star Wars equivalent of a shower cap or something like that. <laughs> but I think I clean up a little bit. And once I'm clean um, and I feel like everything's good, I think I'm going to walk through the apartment and I'm watching, you know, you mentioned wires everywhere and all of that. And I'm kind of tracing through and I see like, oh, there's a desk chair over here. And I sit down and I plug in. And I think we see a lot of this um, in the background while Ava and, uh, oh, what's her name? Suna. Suna. While Ava and Suna are discussing, you know, having that, we see clocks kind of walking along and then sit down in a chair and just kind of, you know, nonchalantly kind of plugs in. But what he's actually doing is he's downloading all of the data um, through like an encrypted channel into like his home database because it gets really stressful whenever he's, you know, What's the right word? Um, he's uploaded a certain amount of data for infiltrating the hotel mm -hmm. and he's keeping all of that intact. And now he can offload that and, you know, 
relax a little bit and then probably start adjusting things for uh, the job with Chindra. Nice. So little yeah. Johnny mnemonic action, like you only have so much, you have to start to offload some. Yeah, oh, that's cool. And I think okay. to a certain extent, what we see is, you know, we see him in the background during that whole discussion with Ava and Suna, and he just kind of plugs in. And then when the camera comes over, we see exactly like you said, the Johnny mnemonic graphics where it's like, you know, tunnel and, you know, gra you know, sci-fi or cyberpunk kind of graphics and all of that and data flowing back and forth. And then eventually he kind of unplugs and looks a little bit refreshed. Cool. What about sci-fi? When oh, she done, goes when you to the, the classic yeah. water shower, and you know, and it's like one of those. It's it's terrifically used, so it is. You know, how do you say? You can see it's been like the the spigot and everything has been patched a hundred times. It's got like tape wrapped around it and bonding stuff on it, and um, yeah, it's like everything about the the place is super run down, um, and she's just like standing under the water like trying to get the smell out of her hair and you know it's it, you kind of see her going and you know more soap and everything um and yeah it's just that switchback but the the thing that's striking about it is um it is a super super well used super old set of accommodations here and not much water pressure as uh as Ava mentioned, so, or Sunya said. It's one of those where it's like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And the, I imagine the hot water heater is tiny. Tiny. It's right there behind you. You know, like you can get, you get shocked by it. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you lean on it. So, yeah. Oh, I think the thing is, is she's also catching like the water that's come out in, in a cup so she can like reuse it for a second rinse, you know, just, kind of, like, <laughs> just to get enough water in there. Of course. So, so, so bad. Good. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, and she, you. Is she done when Ava shows up? Oh, yeah. Oh, close. Okay. I would say. Cool. Mostly bringing the water out of her hair at this point. Nice. It's, it's the curse of having such beautiful long hair, long straight hair that Sci Sci Far Six has. So yeah, Ava, uh, Sci Sci Far Six is finishing up her shower. Um, you notice that the floor near the shower is just a little on the spongy side. Maybe they had some multiple toilet overflows or something like that over the course of years. It has just never quite been fully repaired. Eventually she'll come out or at wow. least open the door. Well, so you done? Yeah, did, did Asuna chase you in here? Yeah, she I'm has a lot of questions. I'm so sorry. That's um, fine. Hold on a second here. It, she kind of has to elbow past you to get to the towels. And <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Here, no, no, I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, it's a little tight here. Um, oh, and she oh, goes, sorry. Do you need? have a sonic shower if i use public showers mostly oh okay well, that makes sense so. yeah we quickly cut yeah. to the <laughs> cyber deck as, as soon on types it's public shower <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's a there's a real nice one in italian location okay they even they even provide towels might stop there after we no. get done with this. But in the meantime, I will go and get, she'll go to like what's clearly her little closet and she has like four sets of identical clothing, like of what you've seen, much like Janice in some ways. Mm -hmm. So. Janice would have noticed he always wears the same clothes. He, he, he respects that. Mm -hmm. Like knows like. Exactly. So mine is probably more, it's all I can afford. So, all right, we are all set. And she goes, where to now? I saw clocks on his data thingy. He might know. Okay. Cool. Uh, clocks, do you want to make a gather information roll? Yeah, that sounds great. 
Um, so I have a question mechanically. Can we do a refresh thing? You know what? We should do a refresh thing. Because we are all in pretty bad shape. Yeah. So take a breather once we're run. And we're going to say it's once per session. Convey how the fiction provides you with an opportunity. We've got that. Take a pill, turn up the volume, all that stuff. Roll the appropriate approach. And uh, plus, if you bring out your angle during the scene. So if anybody wants to try to slide that in a little bit to get yourself an extra die. So I'll start with that. Um, and that was a part of what, you know, whenever I jacked in. I was actually offloading things and kind of trying to relieve pressure and all of that. And mm -hmm. part of the reason that there's so much uh, data for me to store is because whenever I entered into the hotel, I took some of their records. And this is something, given time, I'll go through and see if I can't piece together anything about my background. Um, this is, you know, public kind of things like who stayed here, that kind of stuff, not security level encryption kind of stuff because i'm not interested in hacking the hotel i just want to know is there anything in this web that i can connect back and figure out my background so um this would probably be smartness with rigging and then that an feels extra, right and then an extra uh uh die for learning the truth yeah i like it See what that looks like. I see a, I six. a six. Perfect. So if you check the game rules tab on a six, uh, you that should work. Clear three stress. Um, and it talks about uh, penalties for wounds, but nobody's been wounded yet. I should have had more. I should have thrown more wounds out at you guys during that big fight. Dang it. But that's fine. So yeah, you get to clear three stress, which is good. Uh, let's check in with Ava. Was clearing stress that breather that you had with Suna? Oh, no. I think clearing stress was that breather, breather I had when riding on the top of the stall. Nice. Fun. Because, I mean, A, it's breather. B, I get to pull in my um, thingy. I push the edge, my angle, because I think this is, I don't know what this is. Is this smartness or caution? Probably not caution. Riding on the top, it might be smartness because I don't didn't want to get stuck in the back of the skull. Don't feel it's aggression, really. Okay. But I can. Can I use mobility? Sure. Cool. And I get three dice. Oh, did you pull in your angle? Or yeah, I did. Uh, that's rush push the edge because I'm running on top, riding on top of the skull, which uh, somebody told me was not safe. That's right. And that's why I was doing it. And also, I didn't want to smell like, well, anyway. Okay. Roll this. It's a five, so it's okay ish. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, suck it up, clear two stress. Okay. Fine. Uh, and then what about sci sci far six? I think she goes like after she's gotten out of the shower, she sort of goes and stands behind Soon Ah and sort of goes, What you what you working on? Oh, um, I'm just writing another story. Hmm. It's it's not about anyone in particular, it's just random inspiration. Really? Uh -huh. She goes, Are you gonna uh, upload it to that site of yours that all your friends are adding stories to? And while she's doing that, she's looking at her calm device and she you can see her transfer the funds from Janice into another account mm -hmm. and then go through, hit the beneficiary, make sure it's soon on and say payable on death. Harsh. Um, and I think she'll go, I'm glad you're doing all of that. When we, when we finally get out of here, I'll make sure you have a better deck. Okay. Oh, it's, it's, it's fine. I don't need a better deck. This is great. It, it's just a way to warehouse my ideas. I, I just wish I got some hits. I really, you know, there's some people on AO3 who make tons of money. And I thought, 
I don't know. I just thought I could help out, but it just hasn't. No, nothing's caught on yet. She goes, you. This is you getting ready for things. Don't worry about it. It's not up to you to make money. But I've. I don't know how to help. I want to contribute. I, you know, they keep me sane, keep me on target. It's enough for right now. But five years, then I'll be checking the bank again. Okay? <laughs> okay. Ten times. So, what approach and skill do you think you're bringing to bear for this take a breather? Well, approach, skill, probably empathy. Yeah. And then I guess influence. I tried to tried to calm her down. Tried to calm myself down. That works for me. I'm into it. I don't know if there's anything that fits better for that. Yeah, I'm looking at them too, and I'm not sure anything I mean I don't think you were doing observation there aren't a whole lot that are very social oriented so I think influence your influence here to chill her out which makes you feel better so let's say that works that means you are rolling two and two plus one for bringing in your angle so five dice Yay, I got a six. All right, recover three stress. I'm happy to do that. All right. Cool. So I want to check in at this point. Um, we have just over 30 minutes in our scheduled session. Um, it's forged in the dark which means we can engagement roll and jump straight into a mission. But let's be honest, chances are good that that will take up the remainder of our time. Uh, not opposed to that. I, I am more than happy to facilitate it. The other option is that we progress to more of an epilogue scenario so that we get to see a little bit more of the personal side and have some folks wrap up their storylines without... Um, Without the fret of trying to rush anything. So I'll put it to a lot of you, which interests you more. Well, I, I'm not a huge fan of rushing through one job because, I mean, the chances are good that we won't even finish it. And uh, I don't know, it feels like like we're good if we, if we continue as we were doing and maybe have a little epilogue there. Um, may I suggest one option, another option would be to uh, make a role, have each character make a role for this job that's coming up and then narrate through the epilogue or narrate through that scene how we think it went. A uh, little Neon City Overdrive. That's, oh, is that what it is? Cool. Well, no, just the whole, if you remember the retirement role from, oh, yeah. you know, so oh, I yeah. was just, yeah. like I was just saying, Dad, letting the role kind of help dictate your epilogue is a pretty fascinating approach that I first encountered with Neon City. That's where I was thinking of it. Okay, cool. That sounds fun to me. You guys like that? A little mix, just a little light bit of mechanics to guide the epilogues. That sounds fun. Let's do that. So yeah, we, the three of you, after your breather, you meet up at the underground hideaway that uh, Chindafai has set up and work together to come up with this run to hit back at the people that were targeting her and thereby targeting you. So define a approach and a skill. And if you are getting help or pushing yourself and then make that roll, and then we will start with epilogues. Who'd like to go first? Um, I'll go first. Yeah. Um, and this is sort of the gather information to see what kind of what's going on. I'm going to use caution and rigging. Um, and I'm going to use my glitch die for the wireless interface to droids and that kind of stuff. This is, yeah, 
so let me roll that and we'll see exactly what that's like. And um, let's caution because they might be dangerous. Rigging, enhanced brain. Oh, and I know what it was. Um, I, uh, I'm i also going to spend a, a gear for the deck that I had back at the house, back at my home, in order to transfer data more pertinent to this. So let me roll that. See what that comes out to be. Um, I got a five. Which is... Oh, and uh, the glitch die was on a five. Ooh, okay. Glitch die for the five is no problem. Partial success, you do it, but also suffer a consequence. Um, taking some kind of harm, a reduced effect, a lost opportunity, or a complication. Mm. Um, so I think what's going on here is this is part of this job trying to work with Chendra. Um, oh, and at some point, so clocks is, you know, feeding information for the infiltration that we're going to do and hits a roadblock where he's like, okay, this is where we need to get Chendra in. And she's going to take this whole place down, but they had information for me. They had information where I could get to my background, but I can't do that without stopping the job, right? Ooh. And I have to turn that over so I lose that lead on, you know, this is probably like an old Imperial database that they weren't paying that much attention to, and I just don't have time to grab it and get Chendra in so she, she can dump the place. Oh, so, that's so heartbreak. All right. I'd like to go next. I mean, I can go next because okay. we need to get into this imperial, all imperial um, place, right? But there are still some some people around, maybe, and uh, we need to get past these people. And um, I'm I'm not trying to talk to them because you know a stormtrooper i know that they're pretty badly brainwashed and even even like the smell of their body gloves so um yeah i mean but i, I i'll go in punching instead of shooting but i still have to go in and uh, kind of clear the way for chandra and everybody else to to do their thing right and i mean it's me against a whole group of of others so pushing my uh, I'm, I'm definitely pushing the edge here because nice. uh, um and i will use aggression and close combat because why not why um, not indeed i mean that's what i do Right, aggression is two dice, close combat is three, and I've got the cyber karate specialization thingy. That might be or and, and I also have the cyber I have the cyberware and I'm using that. I'm super strong. So I'm not just punching them and I'm throwing stuff at them. Like nice. Like like it like I'm a Jedi or something like that. Just with my arms instead of with my mind. Because why throw stuff with your mind? Some of the stuff will explode because this is Star Wars. Of course, some things must explode. Yes, that is. Oh, oh wow. that six, is so. critical. Yay. Uh, so uh, per our rules for a critical, you succeed and gain an extra benefit. Uh, can, I, can I have one of the stormtroopers just a, basically a kid that was conscripted and who's got really enough right everything yeah. is awful and and then somebody some some chick drops a kind of a speeder bike on him and he's like he throws down his helmet and says i surrender i've got enough of this and i uh, looks at him and says huh you know what yeah i can you maybe we can do something with you nice and of course, this comes out on the pages of archive of our own Karania City edition. That's awesome. I like. Oh, wait, it. so he's a teenager, basically. Yeah. Okay. I like that. He's in the writing group with uh, Suna. He reads all her stuff. Cool. 
All right. So I said far six. Okay, so and while this is all going down, um, so I'm using a set of drones to catch like footage of what's going down. The whole idea is to get a particularly good offer for gender five from one of the other corps, um, essentially so that she's walking right back into um, the place where she can keep on casting this place down um, before you know anything else goes out, but essentially turning this sort of attack on one corp into a thing of, yeah, you get all the intel, you get these things uh, that go along with, with Chenda mm -hmm. and that sort of thing of they crossed her and this is you know essentially it. So it's kind of, this is what Chenda wants is essentially a, uh, what do you say, a big uh, initial payout and the chance to be back on the inside and the rep that if you mess with her, um, she will mess back. If that makes any sense. You come for the queen, you best not miss. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, and so that's what I'm doing. So I thought I would use uh, drones. It would be live footage, just to mm -hmm. make it clear. Um, and that would be influence and empathy, I think, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then let's see here. So that's five dice. Sounds like it. Yeah. Let's try that. Oh my God, the worst roll ever. Let's see here. Wow. Okay. That is a fail. That is. That is a fail. So, do you have ideas on how this goes wrong? Do you, do you want to uh, lead us down the path or should I take over here? And also you can resist the consequences, of course. Well, I probably will in something, but the thing of how it goes down. Um, I, th I think it's a bit of maybe Janice, the, the complication of the failure is that Janice had a mark on you guys. And so there's a revelation that at the end yeah, that it was Janice that actually, it was, it, yeah. yeah. It was Janice who planted this out and that it was actually backed by Warlord Zinge. Oh, so it was bigger and, and nastier than, than that. Yeah, and the thing is, is that I think that what it is, is it's revealed that it, it is me that's doing this, that like I'm alive and that, in that sense of that, I'm the one that's mucking with Zinge. And my ability to get out of here is Zippo. Yeah. Does that make any sense? I just totally the idea of you getting change. off planet yeah. at this point is done for. You're gonna have to go deep underground. Exactly. And while you've got Chindafai as an ally, a lot of her power has been ruined as well. I oh, will man. I will uh how should we say resist her power being as wrecked as it is. Does that All make right. any sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So basically you're trying to, you're willing to take a bit more on to yourself or just defray it to some, somewhere else so that she okay. doesn't suffer the consequence. That sounds cool. Okay, so I just have to make a roll. Yeah, you're going to make a resistance roll and the resistance is you declare how you do it and roll the appropriate approach, but it's approach only, no skill. That's, I was rolling empathy I think it is like take care of Chenda because God damn it, I do want her to blow this place up now. So does that make yeah? So okay. It's, it's your 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 sympathy slash empathy for Chenda is what carries you through to eat some of the consequences here. It's okay. So let's see here. Ah, six and a one. Cool. So then on the resistance, uh a six means you mark one stress. That's it. Okay. You want to roll high on this one, which I appreciate because in some of the some of the fortune of the dark is like, but I wanted to roll high all the time until now. Dang it. Yeah. Uh, so I appreciate that. You mark one stress and it doesn't happen. Like the, the Chenda part of that complication doesn't happen. She's able to skate. Uh, what does that look like? Um I think what it what it looks like is she like that guy that we talked to that corp that wanted her in 
ends up being the one who makes the offer. And it comes with the big future, you know, essentially the amount. And even though it was a corp that we were attacking, it takes them a while to figure out that it was Zinge behind it. So, but they've already got her. And um, so they kind of keep her on the down low mm-hmm. that, that she's like working for them. They don't know that she's going to blow them up eventually too, but this is her hide thing. So she comes in, she's got that money. She's got that corporate backing, but they know that Zinge went after her now. So they're kind of like in this uh, thing where they have to figure out when are they going to cut her off and turn her over to Zinge. Um, she knows that. I know that. I have to go under that I'm dead. End up having actually soon ah uh, probably adopted by by Bayside. <laughs> ah, I love it. <laughs> Uh, essentially but i'm there all my stuff is like but essentially i have to go and pay big money to make it look like i'm dead the money gets transferred over to soon ah she knows i'm not but she knows she can never talk about me again but i can't work you know i can't work legit anymore i can work for chenda you know for chenda Fi on the down low but that's it so nice nice oh you got burned hard I that is really burned yeah that is sweet and i think and i i think in honor of all that sci sci far six has lost uh soon uh starts writing this series of stories about sci sci far six that take off and it's never anything like what Sai Sai earns as, as a runner, but she gains like this little cult following and there are always people pinging her, asking for more stories or pitching her ideas and wanting to pull her character into their, uh, their whole side stories based off of the world of Sai Sai Far Six. And, uh, and Sunai ends up getting a little bit of a book deal, but but size so passes to memory. Yes. May I add to that? I think that um, it's not really a book deal. What happens is she's writing these stories and Kofuku picks it up and <gasps> says, oh, I want to turn this into a song. Oh, right? that's awesome. And yes. just like a song. So soon on now has some of the Kofuku groupies who are coming, you know, hey, <laughs> when's your next song and all that. Yeah. That's great. That's great. L- l- lace together our Karania City mythologies. To- <laughs> yeah, this is great. Awesome. And we have Ava with her baby stormtrooper. This is so good. Oh, this is good. This is good. Uh, any more baby any X questions storm we have? Trooper, please. Baby X, baby X stormtrooper. Yeah. Baby X stormtrooper. You got to find me a pic of your baby X stormtrooper. He needs a name too. A name, absolutely. So you can play him in the next series? Yes, of course. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Better, yeah. <laughs> No, the only other thing I was going to ask for was a, a kind of a uh, uh, what happened to Suna, and you covered that great, Cher- Cherry. Oh, so yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Cherry, for setting that up. That was cool. Good. With that, uh, we can bring Cyber Pink to a close. Of course, Sabine has homework, but, but I'm sure that it will pay off in a future game. Oh yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Let's move to a quick bit of stars. Just talking about things that you enjoyed. And if you've got any, hey, if you run this again, notes for me, do let me know. Uh, That would be cool. But don't feel like you have to scrounge up a whole lot of wishes. I mean, you know, don't worry about it. So who'd like to go first with stars? I don't know. Um. It was a hoot to play. I enjoyed playing with uh, Sabine, who is always an old hand. It has a great sense of essentially the tropes and the those awesome flippant moments that um, are such a hallmark of Star Wars scenes, uh, particularly whenever violence is about to break out. So it was great to watch. And um, Steven, whose clocks 
was, as all of his characters are, they have a pathos that is so deep and charming and wonderful that I wish that I could have a Clocks series. <laughs> I think that's what Soon Oz, like other, you know, little thread is the story of Clocks that, you know, runs through that she writes little things for. It is not quite as popular, but it has a very, a, a, a bunch of followers who are like, oh, will he find it though? He gave up his his past. Oh no! The only thing is, is to not change it. So he was very handsome. So he was young. <laughs> of course. <laughs> totally, you gotta make him super hot. Yeah. No, it was fun. I, I like I like the city. I enjoy coming back to it. It's such a weird, awful, um, messed up, desperate place. It's it's the best. So those are my stars for sure. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Sherry. Oh, and stars, sure. Uh, yeah, stars to all of you. It was a, it, you, it was so much fun. This is a good game, and I like the 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 way it hacked into Star Wars and the the uh, Sereno thing that you were doing. And I uh, absolutely enjoyed Sci Sci Far Six and her whole family connection and that place that she was living in that was really lovely uh rich stars to you for playing suna as this <laughs> incredibly curious kid who likes writing fan fiction about former stormtroopers damn it um and uh, yeah stars to clocks and that that final oh the complication is he loses um he loses track of his quest and i also like this session with the therapist and the whole thing uh with the with these um veteran, basically veteran clinic thingy that you brought up. I, I really like that. So yeah, I, I feel that the biggest star in this was the way that this this very mission focused thing ended up just being about the characters and just relearning who they are and what they're like. And I, I really enjoyed this. So yeah, we. Good, I'm glad. Um. Yeah, and my stars are so like we discussed before. This is a great narrowing down of the uh, uh, Blades in the Dark system, and I think it works really well for one shots. I really liked Rich the way that you rolled this from, uh, you know, we had one mission and then that mission became a second mission mm -hmm. in order to get a little bit more breathing room, and um, you also so we had downtime and we had these flashback kind of things to show more character driven stuff. Is that in the rules? No. Um, that's really good to bring into this, especially since you ran two sessions, you know, we got all the action and kind of the rules is written in the first part. And then the second part is the, uh, you know, let's have a flashback and see where these people that we've been following for an episode came from. And I really enjoyed, you know, seeing all that background, especially with Suna and you know ava's connection i mean th those really tied in really well so i think that was a good thing to bring into it um and like i have to say sherry's uh description of the apartment and description of her family and description of her job really made the world breathe a little bit more and i really liked that um and you'd mentioned um oh, devil's bargain mm -hmm. um i think you know, I think going as it was, it seemed like we were, you know, we were all pretty stressed out mm -hmm. and you should be for a one shot. Um, I like that we were able to take a breather for, a, a, you know, to reduce that a little bit. Um, but I think Devil's Bargain might help. I always enjoyed the the Devil's Bargain, like for a second session yeah. bringing in and saying, hey, I'd like to, you know, let's bring in a Devil's Bargain because it kind of opens it up to the table of what are the complications that could happen here. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a really good point. Yeah. So, uh, you know, to be honest, I would consider, you know, if I ran a Blades of the Dark game one shot, I would use these rules and because it stripped it down beautifully. And then number two, I'd turn around and if I ran it for like two or three sessions, I'd do exactly what you did, which is bring in downtime during the second and maybe devil's bargain during the third slowly introduce more of those because you can wrap your arms around the rule set as it is yeah, mm -hmm. yeah very I think good. take a breather is really nice as a 
a one shot version of it, but I'm glad that we were able to do some actual downtime, like non mechanical downtime stuff too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, my only wish like, is that I, I wish I'd thrown more violence Ava's way. I wish we'd had a little bit more fighting for Ava because I, I just, my brain space for how Ava fights and the stuff that she's doing was super, like, I just supercharged by the things you did describe. Sabine and I appreciated that. Yeah, um, I like playing Ava, and I feel that that might not be the last time we've seen her because she's kind of awesome. She is kind of awesome. I definitely want to see her again. That's good. I really enjoyed the approach to Tin Defy and the way that you guys were like, well, let's just talk to her like adults and come up with a thing to try to solve for this. The whole approach, and I love that we were able to foreshadow it with a bit of the here's how you guys deal with your day-to-day -day life with sci sci far 6 and the whole uh, separation um, mediation. That was really, really cool. I liked Ava, the scene with Sun Ah and Ava, like being, oh yeah, this is fine. I just tell you the thing that is my history. And then her asking more questions and go, wait, 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 no one asks questions. They usually gets put off immediately by my brusque, overshare of history and uh oh i don't want to delve into this no i need to go i must escape to the shower that was so great i loved that like here it is wait you want to know more no i don't want you to know more that that was a cool flip of that scene sabine it's really clever a super interesting character work there uh already been mentioned but clocks and the the setup for him being part of this counseling and the whole remnants of war and the, the inhumanity of using cyber aware to keep people on the front lines or doing the job being, going from being the figurative cog in the machine to becoming a literal cog in the machine. But then the aftermath of that, that's super gripping to me. That's the kind of thing that um, oh, what was the Supers game? Oh, I can't believe I'm spacing on it. It was a, it was a Supers game where your characters got powers going into third world wars. It was like satirical and very Aeon Flux influenced. And I can't remember for the, uh, dang it. Oh, I feel terrible. Mm. It's like one of my favorite RPGs from the nineties. And, uh, it was it was really cool. Like I, I had those vibes of the the after effects and the uh, uh, Trinity. No, Aeon. It's, it's not. A I, I do like game. Aeon Trinity. It's um, it's from Mayfair Games and Underground, the RPG. Yay! I stumbled into it. Yeah, Underground. If I you've never the cover on that. Yeah, Underground is a mind blowing kind of game. Mechanics make no sense, but the game idea is amazing. Uh, it's one of those during the 90s where they had the like in world advertisements in the book to give you a feel of it like they did in Star Wars to in, in certain points. It's amazing. Uh, but but it definitely had that aftermath. What do you do with the pieces that are left bit? And I love seeing the clocks as part of that world and, and the way he's dealing with stuff. And Steven... Another character that like gave up his, his knowing who he really is for someone else. It's so sad. It tragedies just break my heart. Uh, so really enjoyed this. This was great. I'm I'm really happy it was two sessions. I'm really happy that we were able to learn more about the characters and then pull that through to how things go for you. And I'm also kind of glad that there was a failed role at the end. Uh, that was nice. That was cool. It added a little bite. And... I'm here for you. Good. Thank I have you. to admit, I was I was a little sad. I don't think we ever saw any glitches happen. No, we didn't. And I kept trying to pull in my glitch die to I see know, if we could get it No, I appreciated that. I'm like, come on, yeah. man, come on. Oh, it's a four. Come on, man, come on. It's a five. Oh, <laughs> never gonna glitch. So uh, it's it, we we understand that rule and concept, just not an application. Uh, this was really fun. Thank you three so much for playing and uh, give me a couple of your Sunday mornings or afternoon as it were based on your time zone. So we'll bring the recording to a close here.